Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with more of my content. Um, so yeah, join the Nadine fam, I guess. Ew, should I say Nadine fam? Is that weird? Oh God, no. <laughs> Just hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with uh, content that I post on this channel. I try and post every Wednesday and Sunday. So Sundays and Wednesdays are my upload days. Anyway, um, if you are a returning subscriber, hey, hey, it's good to see you back on my channel. I hope you guys are enjoying my videos. So yeah, let's just get straight into today's video. As you guys can see from the title of the video, today I'm gonna to be talking about the things not to do when working with a photographer. So if you guys didn't know, well now you'll know, I am a, fas I am a freelance fashion photographer. I work, um, I do fashion shoots, I do editorials, I do portraits, I, do, I work fashion week. Um, and this is something that I've been doing for the past two years, maybe coming up to three years now, I think. So yeah, two years plus, and I really enjoy it, I love it. I kind of started when I got bored of taking like my own self portraits and stuff like that. So I just kind of wanted to expand um, the stuff that I was shooting and I just, I've always loved fashion. So it just, it just seemed right to go into fashion photography. So that's a little bit of a backstory. I think I actually filmed a video talking about how I got into fashion photography. I might link that somewhere up here so you guys can go check out that video if you're interested. So anyway, yeah, like I said, today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the things not to do when working with a photographer. This video was actually inspired by a video I came across on Instagram TV. I was scrolling on my explore page and I saw someone uploaded a minute or two video talking about the things they hated or the things that they hated people doing when they were working with photographers something along the, something along the lines of that so I was like huh ding 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 there's been many things that's happened in my very short um career so far in fashion photography I feel like a lot of people would actually resonate with if you are a photographer you'd know so I thought it'd be pretty cool to just come on here and you know just share my thoughts and sort of things that I personally don't like or things I know other photographers don't like um, people doing when they are working with them um, as a photographer yeah I've actually got a list on my phone yes guys I've got a list <laughs> So I'm going to go through it. I've got a few points and hopefully you guys enjoy the video and if you are thinking of working with a photographer, you will not do these things. Like learn, take my, my wisdom and you <laughs> use it to better yourself because some of these things I'm going to mention are quite irritating when they do occur and it's just, it's unnecessary. It's like do your research. It's like when you work with any other professional, you act in the certain ways and I'm not saying this is everyone so yeah let's just get straight into the video let me start spilling all the tea <laughs> okay I say first on my list but to be honest there's no chronological order in the way I'm going to be speaking of things okay so the first thing I do have on my list is being vague when a client contacts a photographer and you're super vague about what it is that you want what it is that you want to shoot it can be very very annoying. It's one of those things where I feel like with anyone you contact with a baker or with I don't know um, like a designer or a stylist or something you have an idea you have a vision of what you want. So when I get messages and especially on Instagram I get a lot of messages from like up and coming bloggers or bloggers in general or a few people that will say something to me like oh hey I love your work I'm really wanting to do a shoot w um, will you be able to do it and I'm sort of like uh okay firstly what do you want? Do you want a portrait? Do you want an editorial? Like where are we going? Like what do you want to do? Obviously you're contacting me because you like my work. Give me more details. Like where do you want to shoot? Um, when are you thinking of shooting? Like being vague it, it, with your description is just very annoying because then it's like I'm spending so much time getting all this information out of you and it's something you should have had known or prepared before you actually messaged me. So sometimes it's an indication as to whether someone's actually serious or not about shooting with you as well. Um, so yeah, being vague is not the coolest thing like it's like know what you want before you contact your photographers and um, so it makes your life easier and their life easier so you can get straight to the point rather than having to like spend all this time like drawing out all the in all the information which you could have provided when you first contacted or messaged your photographer so yeah don't be vague come with detailed information of what you want just like anything else it's like creating a vision it's like having a storyboard so we know what it is that you want before we kind of like get into the swing of things it just makes things easier trust me like do your research then come at me you know what i'm saying it's okay <laughs> another thing i wanted to talk about is not crediting your photographer mm. on my creatives out there not even just photographers like stylists makeup artists hairstylists Ooh, it can be annoying, I'm not gonna lie, it can be very frustrating when you do all this work and someone use, someone posts or shares your image and they don't even credit the creator behind 
like the image. It can be very annoying. I used to always say, hey, just credit, hey, just credit, because it's so annoying and it's just, it's just so time consuming to have to go through everything and then having to message people and be like, hey, I know we did the shoot together, do you mind just tagging or crediting me? And I've come to the stage where when I'm working with someone, the first thing in my contract, I have a contract, I'm like, hey, just obviously give credit to whoever created the work. So if we're working with a stylist, if we're working with a makeup artist, you're gonna tag them, like give credit, give credit to myself, the person who did all the work in taking this image. If you're working with a photographer and they've taken your images and you love them and they're amazing, when you tag them, it opens opportunities for new clients to see that work and then get in contact with them. Whereas when you don't, it's sort of like, well, it just leaves room for interpretation and then other people can start taking those images depending on what it is. Like, I don't know if it's an editorial or something, they could take those images and post it again on their platforms without crediting the appropriate source. And I've been in a few situations on Instagram actually um, where people have used my work, especially my Fashion Week content and published it on their page and kind of like given off the idea that it is their own work, like it's something they shot and it can be very annoying and in some instances, especially when it comes to fashion week, because it's so hard. I don't think you guys understand the level of the effort that goes into shooting fashion week content, especially street style, you're standing about, you're out in the cold or the heat or whatever it is, and you manage to get the shot and then you share it and then people just kind of take it and use it as their own. Like I said, I've had instances where people will take my work, they'll follow me, and I'm like, oh great, a new follower. And then I'll ch check out their page and I see they've posted my work. They've screenshot stuff from my story. They've screenshot stuff from my highlights. They've screenshot stuff from my page. And they've gone on and posted it on their social media and they're taking credit for it without even mentioning where they get it from, which is just very annoying. Cause that's very frustrating because it's like, I put all this time and effort into my work and my creativity and you're just out here passing it as your own. Um, so yeah, a few times I've messaged people and because and they're so shady because they know what they're doing is wrong. I've had a few times where people have ended up blocking me um, from seeing their page when I've messaged them or when I've called them out on stealing my work, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's actually stealing your work, not even copyright anymore. This is more so stealing people's work. So I guess we can make this another point. I know I've just merged it into one. Yeah, taking my work and, and publishing it without my permission. And I've come to the stage where on my profile now, especially Instagram, I've actually stated do not use my work without my permission and people still take my work and post it on their pages without my permission it's and that's another thing especially with instagram being like a platform it's so hard to kind of like monetize and like check everything that everyone's doing their work because it can just go anywhere without you knowing like I, someone can come across your page one time take a bunch of images and then just go off and post it and you'll never know unless they tag you or they post you or someone then refers it back to you. So yeah, that can be quite frustrating. So my point being, if you are working with a photographer and you love the images that you managed to get or you love the images that they shot of you, just credit them. It's so simple, just tag them or tag them in the bio. You know what I mean? It's so discreet on Instagram now as well. It doesn't ruin the aesthetic of the image. Just tag them. And if you are wanting to share someone's work that you appreciate and you like, just ask them. There's no harm in asking. You know what I mean? And most likely, I'd probably say yes, as long as you tag me, because it's great exposure. But yeah, if you're stealing my work, it, it's it's annoying. And I'm sure a lot of photographers will agree with that as well. So yeah, just be mindful. Just be mindful and thoughtful when it comes to working with other creatives, because I'm sure you wouldn't like it if someone took your work without crediting you. So yeah. Okay, leading on to my next point. My next point is being late to your booking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Wow, this one actually irks my soul and I know a lot of people would agree when someone is late It is the most frustrating thing because it's like I'm on a time limit with you You've booked a certain time slot with me It may be that I have other clients in the day or maybe I don't but I just have other things that I'm wanting to do and I've come to the shoot and I'm on time and all you have to do is be on time or if not you're not on time just notify me but I've been in situations where multiple situations actually where my clients showed up they're late sometimes I've had a few situations where people have messaged me and I appreciate that like you know things happen that you know you can't help especially when you're using public transport or whatnot but then it's like you then expect to get that time back no 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 honey if we have booked a two hour slot from 12 till 2 and you show up at half 12 honey you are not getting that extra half an hour unless you are paying me for my time okay <laughs> and i had a situation where a client once she showed up um good 30 minutes late maybe even 40 i waited for her this was during like this was around january february so it was in the winter pretty cold as well we're doing a location shoot she showed up late she didn't really apologize and then she wanted me to stay that extra 30 40 minutes that she was late to get back her time and i was like i'm not doing that like 
you were late, you were very unapologetic about it, and I have other things to do, like I, really, uh, I have other plans. And this particular client in general, I mean I might actually do a separate video on this because this is probably like a photography horror story. <laughs> but this particular client then ends up being so rude and yeah, I just, I haven't worked with her since. We worked together twice prior to the situation and which I haven't, she contacted me and we have, I didn't even respond to her again because I was just sort of like, once you show me who you are, I'm not gonna go out of my way to do something for you and it's especially something that I enjoy and then you leave a sour taste in my you know in my mouth it's not gonna happen so yeah being late is a pet peeve don't be late and if you're late don't expect your photographer to stay the, an extra 15 or 20 minutes or however long it was it is that you were late because they have other jobs to do they've given you a time slot and it's just respectful to be on time you know what I mean like appreciating everyone's time if I'm on time as the as a photographer I'm respecting your time you be on time as well and reciprocate that so yeah just be mindful and if you are running late I guess things do happen and I appreciate that but just notify whoever it is that you're working with and apologize to the team and let them know like things happen all the time but it's just kind of like the way you handle it okay another point is the whole what is it I have it listed on my phone I've written it down as don't approach a photographer with the idea of um, promotion or exposure as payment like no 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 honey I mean okay let me backtrack for certain jobs that you know will be beneficial to you, it depends how much you think it's going to be beneficial to you. And if someone, if a client is contacting you and they're wanting to do kind of like exposure or promotion for your work, I mean, for the point that they've actually contacted you, it means they like your work enough to even want to work with you. So surely if you like my work, you'd want to pay me and compensate me for my time and energy that I put into the work that I'm going to create with you, for you or with you, whatever. When someone contacts me and they're like, hey, do you mind doing like a trade for print where you're asking me to create work and put in all this time and effort in shooting and editing and then you tell me, oh, you're just going to post it and give me promotion. I'm sorry, promotion does not pay the bills. Promotion does not pay for new gear if I need new, new gear. Promotion does not pay for my laptop if I need to upgrade it or promotion does not pay for my SD cards, my batteries, my lenses, like, hello. It's a business, do you know what I mean? Like, as much as I love photography and as much as everyone out there who's a photographer loves the photography and being creative, it's one of those things where it's like, just be respectful of the craft and the time and effort that someone puts into their work. So if you're contacting me, know there's a bunch of processes that goes on behind the scenes that you don't even see. So when you ask me to do work for free, I'm just sort of like, no, no, I don't like that and I'm not with it. Yes, when I first started, I did do a few things for free, maybe one or two, and then I think I just decided, you know what, I'm actually very good at this. If I toot my own horn, you know, whatever. But yeah, I was like, I'm actually very good at this and I know my work is great for you to contact me. So I'm gonna now start putting a price on my work because at the end of the day, it's a lot of time and effort that goes into it. Like the camera you're using, the lens, the SD card, the editing softwares it's a lot you know what I mean so promotion doesn't pay the bills and and sometimes and in most cases actually I will say promotion actually doesn't even really get you another job on some occasions it does you know what I mean but it doesn't get you instant work just like that unless maybe you're like a huge brand but if you're a huge brand and you're contacting me then you got the money honey you got the money <laughs> so yeah asking a photographer to work for free no it's it's kind of like devaluing their work and the effort they put into their craft and I'm sure no one likes working for free of course there is like I said there are some occasions where you might consider it depending on how much you value the work or how much you think it's gonna like help your career but in most cases and in general I just think that if you're gonna work with someone appreciate the time and effort they put into their craft and pay them what they ask and I understand it can be expensive to work with a photographer I mean I'm not even in that range where I'm charging thousands of pounds you know what I mean but I know people that are charging in the thousands and it's sort of like, it's not even about the money, it's more so about the time and the effort and the eye, the creative eye of the person you're working with, it's more about their skill um, and you can't get that from everyone else and everyone has a different style so you really get what you're paying for at the end of the day. If someone is free, on most occasions maybe they are just starting out um, and that's okay because you're, you know, you're building on your portfolio, you're building on your skills, you're learning all these new techniques and stuff so I can understand why you might not feel comfortable enough to charge for your work. Okay, so when I was doing some research on this kind of topic, this is something I haven't experienced per se myself. The point being, um, don't send other people's work to your photographer and ask them to recreate this. I think it can be quite insulting to the, to the photographer's creative um, uh, process and their creative vibe because it's like everyone shoots differently, everyone has a different style, everyone 
has something that they shoot. So it's like saying, go on my page, you see most of my work is like fashion orientated, and then you come to me asking me to shoot, I don't know, like an, I don't know, like nature photography or animal photography. I'm sort of like, huh? Like you see my page, you know what it is that I shoot. And I know it rarely happens, but I think for some photographers it happens on occasion. Like find someone that's in alignment with what you want to shoot, not the opposite. And don't send me screenshots of what you've seen this person's done and what you've seen that person and expect me to recreate that because my creative eye is completely different and I'm sure that's with every other photographer. No photographer shoots alike, no photographer's work is the same, no photographer's editing is the same. Everything is different down to the software, camera, everything. So it's like don't expect to send me something you saw on Pinterest and you're like, oh hey Nadine, can you recreate this shoot that I saw? It's sort of like you're taking away from my creativity. If this is something you want to shoot, yes I say don't be vague and give me ideas but at the same time don't expect to get that exact same shoot. Like we can try and recreate it, I can put my spin on it, but it's not gonna be exactly what it is that you're sending me that you've seen someone else recreate. Cause if you've seen that from someone else, then go to that photographer, go and ask them to help you recreate that shoot. And even then, most photographers, once they've created something, the moment is done, it's an idea, it's a concept, they've executed it, they're moving on to the next thing, you know? Most work that I've completed and done with brands, like I've had a mood board to work with, nothing was exactly as it is, but like you can see the elements of the inspiration from the images or the mood board that I was giving um, by my clients, and I try to, you know, put my spin on it to give them exactly what it is that they're wanting. Okay, so another point, I know for some people this has probably been their first point, I don't know, but it's not paying on time. It's not paying according to the deadline that you have signed a contract to and it's like, oh my goodness. Okay, so I, I've never really been in a situation where no one's, like my clients haven't paid me on time. I've had situations where they've been a bit late in terms of like when I submitted my invoice and then obviously I have to wait like until their next payroll date. But um, people are like not paying on time. It's just not acceptable. I've done a job. I've put all this time and effort into it as a creative, as a photographer. Pay me for my time basically. Just pay me for my time. Pay me for my work. Um, it's I just find it quite rude because it's so simple and it's just again having respect for the creative that you're working with um i just feel like paying on time is just good etiquette and no one should have to chase up their client for payment especially if you love as a client you know you love the work and you're happy with the results there was no issue with delivery why would you then prolong paying at the end of the day if we've stuck to your deadline and we've given you everything you've wanted the least you can do is just pay them yeah it's not appropriate so if you are going to be working with a photographer make sure you have your money in hand whether it's a bank transfer it's a cash in hand whatever it is that you're doing paypal um, to protect yourself as well just make sure you pay them on time you've received your images you pay your photographer transaction done it's just simple etiquette okay okay moving on to my next point oh, okay so this is another one actually um cancelling at the last minute i've had this happen to me maybe once or twice i've had a client cancel on me cancelling a shoot is it is quite annoying unfortunately it does happen and there are situations that are out of your control that you know things happen i've had shoots cancelled and rescheduled it's just what it is but cancelling your shoot last minute that is very very frustrating for a photographer especially a freelance photographer um you know you've taken your time out of your day to work with this person and you've planned around their shoot and then they cancel on you it sort of just leaves you like a bit in a, of a in a bit of a rut because it's like well maybe you could have had another opportunity with another client that you've now turned down because you knew you had this client coming up and then they cancelled on you. So it's just sort of like being mindful, respectful again for uh, the photographer. If you've booked the time slot with a photographer and you, for whatever reason you may have, you need to cancel that shoot, just let them know appropriately, like at least 24 hours in advance so they can, I don't know, if there's another job that's come through, they can accept that job. It's just basic, basic etiquette when working with anyone or meeting with anyone, you know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, so this next point I actually came across again when I was doing research and I think it, it's nothing I've actually ever experienced personally. Um, I mean, I've had a few comments made but I didn't really take it personally. I know some people take it personally. But it's like, um, I, I have written down um, compliments on their equipment rather than their skill. And it's just sort of like, huh? How does that make sense? A camera is just a camera. Without the creative mind or creative eye, you cannot shoot the um the photos the camera is just the body do you know what i mean it doesn't have it doesn't move by itself it doesn't move angles it doesn't change perspectives or lighting or style so it's really strange to me when i came across people saying like you know they've been, they've been on occasions where someone compliments their camera and says oh my god that's an amazing camera it's so great i bet if i had a camera like that i could take pictures like that i'm sort of like 
okay. The camera, yes, the camera is great, but it's how you use it and what you use it for that makes it even better. You don't have my mind, you don't have my creative eye, so you cannot create my work, <laughs> okay? You can't. As much as you think you could if you had the camera, take it, let me see. Go do your thing, come back to me. <laughs> I wish I could say that, but I don't think I take it so personally, but when doing research, I know a lot of people said that's something that really frustrated them, is when people compliment their gear rather than their actual skill. And let's not get it twisted, it is a skill. Photography is a skill. As much as people try to denounce it or belittle it, I'm sorry, like, it's everywhere. I mean, it's everything you see, like, it's advertising, it's, it's marketing, it's, it's everything. So for you to now say to me, it's my gear and not my creative eye or my creative vision or my creativity, I'm just sort of like, are you okay? Like, what? Oh, we don't even add the camera doesn't need me to hold it. It can do it by itself. It doesn't make any sense. Just be respectful of someone's craft. Like, you know what I mean? It's not the camera. Yes, a camera can give you amazing shot quality and great, great um, shots. But it's about the vision. It's what you envision and how you execute it. That's what the camera's for, is to, you know, bring to or capture what the naked eye sees. That's how they, that's the saying when it comes to photography. It's like what the eye sees, you're trying to, you know, create that or capture that, you know, in digital form or whatever it is that you're using. Um, so no, it's not the gear. Um, yes, the gear helps um, advance the level of photography that you do, but in terms of, sorry, having that creative eye, it's down to the individual. Um, so don't disregard someone's talents by telling them it's the gear they're using. Okay, moving on to my next point, um, comparing your camera to the iPhone. I actually find this quite irritating. <laughs> oh, when people say, oh my gosh, the iPhone, the iPhone can take as good quality images as this camera, the iPhone, the iPhone. Okay then, you use the iPhone. <laughs> I will stick to my DSLR. And you're telling me your iPhone can do exactly the same thing, honey. That don't make any sense, but okay, if that's what you believe, that's what you believe. I think it's just really strange because it's like, if the iPhone could do it, then why are you contacting a photographer? Why are you asking me? Like, surely you should be able to shoot it on your iPhone then. Do it. Use the iPhone and do the shoots. Why are you contacting me? Huh? I don't need to know. It's very strange when people compare, like, their tech or their phone to, like, a proper, like, setup. It's, it's just very strange because it does not produce the same quality at all all yes iphones do have great quality um cameras i use an iphone i love them i do my i take my pictures on iphone sometimes when i'm doing my um stuff on my instagram but it, you can there is no comparison there ain't i'm sorry but there ain't okay <laughs> get it out your head cool Ooh. okay so this is actually my last point on the list this is the last thing i actually wrote down um it's asking your photographer for all the raw files from the shoot why why is the question why i mean yes we can go through images that you like the most and we i can edit those of that's what i do in general when i work with anyone i send the contact sheets with all the images that i captured and they go through and they circle and let me know the ones they like but for you to ask me to send you all the files that i captured which could be over a thousand images in raw files um no i'm not going to do that firstly do you know how long it takes to actually send raw files do you know how slow the process is for a client to say for uh, to their photographer to send them the whole file from their shoot? It's just absurd. It just it's way too long, um, and most times not every single shot that was captured represents the photographer's true kind of like ability. And I know there's been situations with myself again where I've done shoots and stuff, and some of the images captured, I'm like, oh my god, no! What the hell was I thinking? How did this happen? Where did this come from like most files can be blurry and they can be well out of focus they can be off center they you know it's just there's so much going on and not every single file not every single picture is going to be great or reflective of the photographer's talents now i don't actually send all my files because i'm just sort of like well i don't like it so i'm not going to put it out then then you post it and then people see that as my work because personally i don't feel comfortable about it just get that idea out of your head you can go through the shoot um, catalog with your um, photographer and then select the images that you like as long as it's within their kind of like um, package deal or whatever. You pick how many images that you want edited, you can select it and your photographer will edit those files and send it to you. I, I can't believe I used, I personally used to do that, um, but I, I would never do that now that I know what I know and how I work and it's just so time consuming, like it's insanely time consuming and it's just unnecessary because you're, you as a client you'll never use all those images even myself when I do my own shoots for my Instagram or my blog and stuff 
I don't use half the images that I shoot. Like I'll probably shoot about 50 images and out of those 50 images, maybe two or three, even if I like them all, will go up on my page because I'm not going to be repetitive with the same content that I put up. You know what I mean? Get that, get that idea out of your head. We're not going to send you the whole file or every single image that we shot. I mean, maybe if you're working with big, big clients, possibly, yes, I don't know. But if you're just an individual coming to me, <laughs> baby girl or baby boy, whoever, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. We're going to pick our set amount of images, I will edit them and send it to you. So yeah. All right, well, I think this concludes my list on things not to do when working with a photographer. Um, I hope you guys found this video insightful. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if you are a client wanting to work with a photographer, hopefully this is giving you some insight on how to approach a photographer and things not to do. Um, Again, it's all about just being respectful. If your client, if your photographer is respectful to you, you're respectful to your, to your photographer. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're a photographer, leave your comments if you can resonate with any of the points that I've actually made in today's video. And if you're a client and you're willing to tell or maybe you can say if you've done any of these things on shoots before, you've said any of these things before to your photographer, um, let me know in the comment box down below. Let's get a conversation going. Um, so yeah, I really actually enjoyed filming this video, especially talking about photography, because it's something that I don't talk about a lot on this channel. And I I think I should because I do really well actually. <laughs> like, I create amazing content and not to blow my own horn but yeah I'm, I'm pretty good so I could share a few tips here and there like I know I'm still new into the industry but I think I've grasped some knowledge when it comes to this industry. So this is not to discourage anyone from contacting photographers or reaching out to anyone but it's just about being more mindful and thoughtful about kind of like the things to say and how you act and how you behave towards um, your photographer. Um, so yeah and I'm sure most people are and this is just kind of like you know a by the way and i'm sure most people are respectful um especially in this like day and age where a lot of people are getting into you know the creative industries and whether it be styling or hair makeup and um, photography um a lot of people are dealing with more people now and they're more aware of that kind of the etiquette and the way you behave when you're working um in this environment so yeah again i hope you guys enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you did um, subscribe to my channel like hit that subscribe button if you've made it to the end of this video or just in general just to see more content from me okay <laughs> and yeah I will see you guys in my next video Ooh, and I'll put my Instagram on screen so I'll leave my photography page on screen as well as my personal Instagram and you guys can check out my page and if you want to shoot if you're a client looking for a fashion photographer I'm here I've got some availability in my schedule so hit me up let's see let's work together let's create some magic okay anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video i will see you in my next one bye